The views and opinions expressed by the hosts of Black Talk Radio News and any guests represents their views and their views only and do not necessarily represent the views of the Black Talk Media Project or the Black Talk Radio Network. Hello and welcome to this Black Talk Radio News podcast. My name is Scotty Reed. This is the mayor of Buffalo, New York, Byron Brown. I want to do a podcast about this mayor race in Buffalo because I'm seeing similar patterns play out across the country. Um, My last podcast, I talked about Representative James Clyburn, a Democrat out of South Carolina, who has interjected himself into different uh, Democratic primary races across the country. Um, I played on on my podcast. He was talking about defund the police and talking about how he's against all of that and, you know, calling people names and and just basically lying. So, you know, for more background on James Clyburn, go check out the last podcast about the liberal uh, James Clyburn. And so some of the talking points that he has been using has been used by other people, including like this uh, liberal Byron Brown in New York, Buffalo, New York, in lying about his um, his opponent. Her name is India Walton, and she is a progressive, but he's been lying about some of the things that she stands for and some of the things that she has said. Now, this man actually lost the Democratic primary, but is he bowing out gracefully? No, he's not. Now he's talking about launching a write-in campaign, which is only going to help who? Demo- uh, Republicans. If there's a Republican running in the general election, he wants to help Republicans. All right. And so this is just pattern and practice that I'm seeing from these liberal Democrats who are so cozy and get most of their funding from these corporations that fight to, to suppress and to keep from coming into fruition some of these progressive policies that will help everybody, you know, um, not just black people, but it will help us the most. Things like Medicare for all, things like um, $15 an hour federal minimum wage. These are the things that these liberal Democrats are against. And then they want to blame progressives for why they are losing these races. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that these people are basically, you know, turned into right wing reactionary conservatives with their language. So, again, Byron Brown lost the Democratic primary for mayor in Buffalo. But again, he's not bowing out gracefully. Well, this is what he's doing. We are going on to the general election as a candidate for mayor and what people have been saying is write down Byron Brown. You know, we know the difference between socialism and democracy. We are going to fight for democracy in the city of Buffalo. The voters have said that they don't want an unqualified, inexperienced, radical socialist trying to learn on the job, on the backs of the residents of this community. We will not let it happen. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, this man says the voters don't want India Walton. Then why did they vote for her more than they voted for you and you lost the primary? Now, James Clyburn was complaining about sloganeering, blaming Democratic losses on sloganeering. And as I pointed out in that last podcast, sloganeering goes hand in hand with politics. As I pointed out, what did Barack Obama, what was his slogan? Change you can believe in. And Hillary Clinton was talking about, I'm with her. And they want to, and James Clyburn makes this ridiculous you know, a statement about, oh, we're losing because of slogans like defund the police. Well, this man is sloganeering. (laughs) He's talking about right down Byron Brown. No, Doodoo Brown, you need to go sit down somewhere and stop helping these right-wing conservatives gain power in this country simply because y'all hate progress and y'all masters are these corporations that fund your campaigns. So India Walton didn't take this sitting down. This is um, 
what she had to say. Instant reaction to what Mayor Brown said from India Walton herself. Now again, she beat the mayor in the Democratic primary last week and will face Mayor Brown in his write-in campaign. Now, let's take, take a listen there. India Walton joining us here live in uh, 7 Eyewitness News studios. Thank you so much for joining us, India. Thank you for having me. All right, I read your uh, statement uh, a few moments ago, uh, your reaction to the mayor's announcement today, and it's pretty obvious you don't seem to be very happy. Happy, but I'm also not shocked. We went into this knowing that we needed to carry all the way through November, and as is in keeping with um, our current leadership's style, when he makes a mistake, he doubles down on it, and instead of owning up, um, doubles down and continues to stay the course. The voters of Buffalo have spoken, and the fear that is being seated is going to um, undermine the productive transition that our team needs to hit the ground running come January. So we are focused. Um, we never stopped running. Our team immediately pivoted to our goal of winning the general election. I believe the people of Buffalo are going to again vote for progress and won't be fooled by the attempts to uphold the status quo and continue to enclose power and wealth. India, you know, I think it's no surprise that uh, to anybody, uh, this is this is not a revelation that that Mayor Brown and his campaign team kind of dismissed uh, your campaign up until primary night when he lost. Now we're hearing him say some pretty strong words about you. Uh, we heard that just within the last hour. He basically says, if you win, the city will be less safe. I want to play the clip so that I'm not putting words in his mouth. I want to play the clip and then I want to get your reaction. And I can tell you that every time she talks about defunding police, uh, which will make our community less safe, uh, which will make our uh, home values go down, which will make our children less safe, uh, there, that is more time that people are calling us, showing their support for our candidacy. So. I hope she continues so what do you have to say about uh, what he said there? I have never said defund the police, and I'm not sure what it is that he's getting at. What I have said is that our police budget is as high as it's ever been, and crime is still up. And we know that the way to reduce crime that's data and scientifically proven is by providing people with more resources, with jobs, with a quality education, with safe, stable, affordable housing. And the only thing radical about that message is that it's rooted in love, and what we've seen is that we have continued to spend our resources taking care of the people that are already okay and it's past time for us to take resources and deploy them at the neighborhood and community level um, where we are taking care of working class individuals and families. All right, Ms. Walton, there are some in the Buffalo business community who have reacted to your winning the primary the other day and they seem to be a bit scared. They think that uh, your social policies uh, would end economic progress here in the Queen City. Your reaction to that? My reaction to that is what I often say is that we've heard a rising tide lifts all boats, but if you don't have a boat, you are likely to drown. All that we want to do is level the playing field and bring equity and justice into the city of Buffalo. When people have money to spend, they reinvested in the economy and that is how we drive our economy forward not by continuing to enrich the already wealthy but by providing opportunities for those who work so hard to keep our city moving forward all right so let's talk a little bit about defund the police again she didn't run on that going back to my last podcast about james Clyburn when he was being interviewed by Mehdi hassan and he was saying the same thing about defund the police is an albatross around the neck of the Democratic Party. And that's why we lose. And, 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 and as Mehdi Hassan pointed out to him, none of those people that you mentioned that lost against Republicans ran on defund the police. But when you have people like, quote unquote, the squad um, who have talked about defunding the police, they won their elections. So again, these people aren't in tune with the, pe the working class people, the working class people who are often the victims of over-policing, of police brutality. 
you know, uh, again, as I talked about in the last podcast, these people, these liberal Democrats don't even want to end qualified immunity and are undermining pushes, not just locally, but in Congress um, to redirect some of these funds and, and, and strip these cops of their immunity when they do something wrong instead of the taxpayers being on the hook, these cops will be on the hook for their wrongdoing. All right. So, but let's talk about defund the police. All right. It's really not talking about just taking all the money away from the police department, but it's talking about reducing some of their budgets, which are in the trillions of dollars in, in some of these cities and providing social services, educational opportunities, health care for the residents of these places. So if we take a look at this article, I believe it's from Politico, um, we have Elisa Garza, who was the co-founder of Black Lives Matter, she was on Meet the Press and she said, when we talk about defunding the police, what we're saying is invest in the resources that our communities need. The ideal has found some success. San Francisco Mayor London Breed proposed redirecting police budget money to programs and organizations that serve communities that have been systematically harmed by past city policies. New York City will slash its $6 trillion police budget by $1 trillion. And Los Angeles is considering up to $150 million in cuts to its $2 trillion police budget. Listen, I had no idea that some of these police departments had so much money. I, I did not realize that. And those police departments that were named have some of the highest incidents of police violence and corruption. So whatever happened to, if you want to solve problems, you can't just throw money at it. But apparently James Clyburn, Byron Brown, and other liberal Democrats are defending the police. Like we just didn't have a year worth of protests nationwide calling for solutions to the problems of police brutality in this country. So now they resort to these right wing talking points. And again, this man lost, Byron Brown lost instead of bowing out. He wants to be a sore loser and he wants to prevent India Walton from winning by splitting the vote for those who might lean Democrat so that they'll, you know, vote for him. And then you split the doggone votes. And then guess who strolls in the office? Right wing conservative Republican. People, we need to wake up and we need to stop supporting these liberal Democrats like Byron Brown. And we need to support, throw our support behind these progressives. All right, this has been Scotty Reed with the Black Talk Radio News Report. Please continue to support the production of not only this podcast, but support the production of independent black media on Black Talk Radio Network. Dot com by making a tax-deductible donation to the Black Talk Media Project. Peace and blessings to all.